Hello everyone and welcome back to the Silicon Nubian YouTube channel where we're all about things tech. Today we're going to take a quick look. This is by no means a comprehensive review or even overview. We're just going to kick the tires a little bit of the latest MX Linux release, version 19.1. What's the difference between version 19 and 19.1? Really all that, not much. Basically it's just a refresh of the 19 release which includes additional bugs, bug fixes, application updates, uh, since the release of 19. So they're maintaining the distribution very well. MX Linux has b blown up in terms of popularity, uh, being the most popular on DistroWatch right now. And for a long time, it's been one of my top three distributions. In fact, I've used this extensively and it was on my last uh, permanent Linux box and will go on my next one as well. So let's talk a little about the lineage. MX Linux can trace its roots back to Debian. It is Debian based but all the way back to Mepis and more recently Antix. It is a lightweight distribution which is by no means feature starved. It's actually feature over the top complete with a lot of custom packages and custom tools that we're going to go through really quickly here. Uh, it's based on XFCE. The performance out of the box is incredible and MX Linux also provide uh, specialized versions. It's not just one ISO that you can download. Uh, the basic one ships with version 4.19 LTS kernel if you want. There are other kernel choices as well. And there's a special one called AHS, um, Advanced Hardware Support. That version ships with the 64-bit Debian 5.4 kernel and MESA 19.2 and with the latest XOR drivers as well. So you have a choice of different things, which can actually be a little confusing to the newbie. But once it's installed, the uh, experience is pretty much the same. Uh, the latest one I was talking about, the AHS, that's for people with more up-to-date AMD and uh, Intel hardware. Uh, and uh, I have to point out that this is running in a virtual machine, and the base system uh, that it's running on has an AMD Ryzen 3 3900X CPU and an AMD 5700XT graphics card. So performance is blazing. And on real hardware, it's actually quite fast as well. Uh, so let's get started. Take a quick look at the desktop. Except for the Google Chrome icon, which would not be there after uh, a fresh install. Uh, I installed it and I uh, told the icon to go into the desktop. I placed it on the desktop so you would have these two only. You have the manual, which comes up very quickly, which is great. Different things are in here in terms of setting up a printer and anything you could think of file management and then we have the fact frequently asked questions how can I add this how can I do that so it's great to have that on the desktop I also have uh, a little display over here it's called Conky it's displaying the time of day showing us the date and how much hard drive space is being used uh, memory is being used in CPU uh, we are running on a virtual machine so don't take too much stock in how much hard drive is being used but let's take a look at how much memory MX Linux is using up in this setup right out of the box. So right out we can see that MX Linux is using just over 600 megabytes of RAM out of the box of the 8 gig that's been allocated towards this virtual machine. I would consider this in today's world to be very lean uh, for what it's offering you. We're going to get into it a little bit more and show you. Let's take a look quick at the toolbar down here and um, we have, uh, if we click anywhere, we have different things. Usually when you right or left click, you'll get different menus. So let's take a look at what's offered. Okay. So we have the start menu or what people would call it start menu, application menu here. There is another way to get at that as well. We can always right click on the desktop, go to the bottom and choose applications. And we have other selections such as uh, run program and terminal emulator as well. And we have settings are up here settings manager we have the lock screen switch user and we have the logout where we get a selection of things we can do logout switch user and whatnot let's move a little bit to the right we have the two virtual screens that are here we have our file manager which is the well known and respected thunar uh, i do do updates right after installing these systems in a virtual machine or even our real hardware, the first thing you should do for any Linux, any Linux distribution is run the updates and get current. So we can see that right now it's running Thunar 1.8.12, a great little file manager. 
Uh, the default web browser is Firefox, nothing wrong with that. And we do have a choice of other ones as well. On the right side, we see we have our volume. And if you right click on it, we can open up the mixer or open up preferences for the volume control. Uh, we can open up our mixer as well and uh, modify our playback and recording output devices settings. Here we have an uh, icon that's an update manager actually that allows you direct access to Synaptic. If I double click it with no updates available, it will take me to Synaptic Package Manager, which has been a standard packet manager for, uh, particular for Debian based systems for longer than I know. Uh, so, uh, quite easy to use if you know what you're looking for. It can be a little cryptic for some people. And we're going to show you a different way to install packages in MX Linux as well. If you right click, we can see we can always check for updates. And it'll tell you if there's any updates and it says zero updates available. The icon will turn green if there's updates and if you double click on it and uh, it'll ask you for a password, of course, uh, it will launch into the updater. And we have settings for it. Right here, full upgrade is standard. Um, MX view and upgrade now, if, if we left click, when updates are available. So there's a different, when if updates are available, it will open up the updater, but if none are available, it will open up Synaptic, which makes perfect sense. Uh, this be wary of, it says automatically answer yes to all prompts during full basic upgrade. I like a little bit more control and I'll answer yes, but sometimes when the updates and upgrades are quite extensive, you'll be trapped at your computer for a while. Automatically close terminal window when, during, when full or basic upgrade is complete and it allows you to change the type of, um, I should say, change the appearance of the icon and update automatically, which is unchecked. I'd rather just tell me and I decide. Here, of course, we have uh, for the battery in terms of UPS, this is connect system is connected to UPS. Here we have um, removable device manager. And um, here we have networking. We can edit the connections, we can add connections and whatnot. Uh, here we have our clock and our calendar. When I click, we'll bring our properties and then we could select the background color for So there's a lot of configuration. Uh, spend some time with this. It never looks the same after a week of using it as it did out of the box. There's so much configuration. And of course, here we have, and when you right click on any of these buttons, you can have properties, individual properties for the buttons. And with this one, you can actually tell it what buttons are available to it because this one will take you to the logout, shutdown, restart, suspend, or switch user selection. You can add as well. Let's take, take, a, take a real quick look at some of the applications, but I, t I mentioned that there are custom applications from MX Linux. Let's look at them. MX Tools is one of them. MX Tools is fabulous. It is a collection, I'd rather go this way, of tools specific to MX Linux. I'm sure other people have these as well, but the way it's packaged makes MX Linux such a joy to use. Uh, this one in particular, Boot Repair, saved me one time when I was purposely trying to break the system. I broke it, couldn't boot back in. I rebooted with a live version of MX Linux, access to Boot Repair, and got my grub back up and running. So really, really good tool. Another good thing is you can configure the system the way you want it, have it running exactly as you want it, and you can create a live USB of that system. Talk about taking it with you with MX Linux, absolutely easy to do. And of course, snapshots, uh, they take disk, disk snapshots. This is what I call a, a, an essential thing to have for disaster recovery in case of failed drives or loss of information. Uh, look at the rest of them. Again, this is not a comprehensive look. It's a quick overview. Boot options, rescue, cleanup. Cleanup is good. It'll, to make it easier, I should have made this automatic. Here we go. Um, you can run your disk analyzer and tell you what's using up what space on the disk, what files, and you can clear out a lot of junk. Uh, boot options, of course, boot repair, user manager, bash config, conkey, which is what we have in the corner here. We can configure that as well. We have MX Tweak, which is mostly tweaking the uh, 
of the panel down here this is called the panel we can move its location give it a theme change the compositor of the whole system config options display settings uh, and uh, other things that we can do it's a little tweak tool that tweaks things a little bit more uh, in depth than just uh, changing basic settings but it works very well NVIDIA driver installer, date and time, system sounds, codex installer, so that's really good if you're missing certain codecs, you want to play certain files back, network assistant, brightness, st and assist trains, keyboard and fixed GPG keys, package installer, repo manager to manage your, rep um, your repositories, quick system info, which will give you a quick and curses based um, test-based system info readout and it automatically will save it to the clipboard in case you want to uh, print that out. Format USB and, I, and iDevice mounter. Now this is interesting. I told you about Synaptic Package Manager using it to install software. To some people it's a little cryptic. And then we have the package installer. It makes things a lot easier. We'll make this full screen. So in each category audio, browser, children, desktop environments, all the way down to window managers, we have a selection of selected chosen software that we can install. Um, for example, if I go to browser, you can see that Firefox and Chrome are already installed and grayed out. I love Opera, so if I go to Opera as a choice, I can click install. It will then go out and download and install Opera for me. And there, it's getting it. And that will install Opera for me. I could always go back after it's done. And once Opera is installed, and this is interesting, do you want to update Opera together with the rest of the system? Yes. And now it's unpacking it, Opera Stables version 67.0.3575.53, oh, and that's a mouthful. And whatever else it needs to do, and it's checking security and doing all that, and it will install the package for me, and successfully. Now if I go under Browsers once again, you'll see that Opera is now installed. And where is Opera? Not on the desktop, obviously. If I go into Internet, Opera is there. And I can always add it to my desktop and now I have Opera running really well there you go very quick absolutely love it desktop environments again it ships with XFCE but if I wanted the Budgie GNOME KDE 5 standard LXDE, LXDE or Mate I can install it easily from here and this install, installs um, for you very simply development tools docs email is it here Thunderbird Thunderbird is installed by default, but I have Claws Mails as well. Install different uh, file managers, even window managers. I can go down, Fluxbox is installed. That's what it ships with. And I have Ice Window Manager, and uh, if I want to install that as well. And we do have other wallpapers. We can install wallpaper packs from um, previous versions of MX Linux uh, video. We have KDE Live, MM Player, and whatnot. So you see what it's like. Very simple to use. In fact, a complete pleasure to use. And you can tell right away, uh, LibreOffice is installed by default. Again, I've only installed Opera and Google Chrome, so you can see everything that comes with it. Uh, we have favorites, recently used, all applications, and we have accessories. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you can see <laughs> lightweight, but not in functionality. Development, games, graphics, uh, of course, GIMP is installed. Scan, LibreOffice is installed, so we have the draw here. Internet, so we have a few things that were installed, but most of it came with it. Uh, multimedia, everything that you need, SMTube for YouTube. Uh, well, it's too much. MX Tools, again, we have the list of all the things we've seen before, but here it's just another way to access them. Office, of course, we have LibreOffice, eBook Reader. Uh, PDF Arranger and other things here and we have settings now these are the the regular settings that come with MX Linux and here we are standard settings so what do we have here again a lot of it 
we went through the MX tools and went through MX tweak. Now we have all these other standard settings. Many of them are XFCE standard settings. And the ALSA mixer, uh, printer settings, you want to add a printer, uh, removable drives, system locations, uh, you, you name it, we've got it here. So what do we have here? Again, if you right click, we have other selections we can do on the desktop, create the launcher, create URL, open terminal here, create a document, uh, symlink, share a folder on your network. Lots of things we could do. Desktop settings, of course, where we have our different wallpapers, which I love, done in real time. Oh, I like that one. Let's go back to that one. And with menus, of course, we can change the size of our icons. Done in real time. See how they grow? Fantastic. Again, this is really a quick overview. I'd really like to do a more in-depth review of this, but I will tell you straight out the box, this is one to check out. Quite stable, lots of recovery tools if you need them. I only needed them because I forced my hand and tried to break the system and did and recovered it without much issue. Performance is stellar in a VM or even on real hardware. I've had a lot of experience with MX Linux on real hardware. It is updated. It is a very active community. Uh, it just works really well, and uh, I can't speak more highly about it. In my opinion, this is a must-try, and as a daily driver, it's incredibly good. Uh, that's the video for today. A quick overview. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. Once again, this is not a comprehensive look. Just a little quick overview for those who may not have had uh, the experience to, or the opportunity to take a look at MX Linux more seriously. I want to thank you again for uh, continuing to support the, the channel. More to come, and we will see you soon.